You're listening to Health Professional Radio. My name is Wayne Buckler, and today my guest is Bill Adamson of Errol Street Osteo. Bill's described on his website as someone who laughs loudly, draws poorly, reads widely, and listens attentively. So let's have a listen to what Bill's got to say to us. Bill, welcome to Health Professional Radio. Good day, Wayne. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. Bill, tell us a little bit about what it is that you do. What is an osteopath? Osteopathy is a general philosophy in some way of looking at how the body works. So what we get trained at university to do is we learn huge amounts of anatomy, physiology, pathology, clinical diagnosis, uh, radiology. Essentially, we spend the first three to four years learning the normalcy of the body and how what we should expect and the way the body moves and operates and functions, um, as well as a lot of pathology and where things go wrong so that as a primary care practitioner, osteopath should be able to differentiate between a musculoskeletal condition, which is in Australia is our largely our scope of practice, and also something that masquerades as a musculoskeletal injury that could need further investigation by a suitable specialist. Uh, and then the final year or two is my, was where I really started getting enjoyment a lot from my osteopathic training was looking at uh, biomechanical changes. So looking, we got taught the intricacies of how the body should work in a, in a general sense, and then spent the final year or two looking at when things go wrong and how to predict them and, and, and predict them. And so then as an osteopath, what we try and do is we spend half an hour to an hour with a patient, run through a serious orthopedic history, you know, asking them about their life, what they've been doing, what may be affecting their presenting condition. Uh, and that varies between practitioner and then which I spend, you know, five to ten minutes watching them move and trying to figure out if they have restrictions within a specific joint or a movement pattern that doesn't seem quite correct. Uh, if I can get them to correct that movement pattern by themselves without having to do hands-on stuff, I'm a pretty excited osteopath because it's very easy if that's the case. But generally speaking, I'll use a few hands-on techniques, whether it be massage or manipulation or MET, stretching, relaxing. Another one I use a lot is just getting people to calm themselves and center themselves. In this day and age, we have a lot of people who just operate a bit too quickly and a bit too high-paced. Uh, and so a lot of the benefits of massage or any manual therapy, I think, is being a bit more still and just being in a room with one person, their attention, not on their phone, not on their computer, not on their TV, and they're screaming kids at the same time. <laughs> now, Bill, given the hands-on elements of your practice and that your practice is Errol Street Osteo, I'm assuming your geographical footprint is Melbourne, basically. Yes, for me, North Melbourne in the inner city. Uh, I work, I started my business here just on a year ago, um, and I'm practicing out of a GP's practice. So that's been a great experience for me Getting the, getting the trust of the GPs, first of all, um, and since then working with them and, and getting to treat a lot more complex cases, which I really find fascinating, you know, com- complex chronic pain, regional pain syndromes, headaches, a lot of headache patients I see here, which, which is interesting. And one that, that, just on a little tangent, I find headaches fascinating. The World Health Organization says that 70% of headaches come from muscle and joint pain, and yet the majority of people in society tend to think that of headaches as some sort of esoteric brain thing that is just a normal occurrence. But for a lot of the people we see who come in with recurrent headaches, it's just they're clenching their jaw or they're holding too much upper neck tension or holding their phone on their shoulder and wondering why they're getting headaches and just eating packets full of Nurofen and Panadol. Uh, but yeah, servicing definitely in the North Melbourne inner city areas. Phones have got a lot to answer for. I think the commonest cause of headache from phone is people who walk into lampposts while they're texting, but that's just my <laughs> novice view. Now, Bill, it says on your website that you've treated elite athletes, nursing home nanas, uh, weekend warriors, desk-bound professionals. What is it that people would recognise as something gone wrong that would cause them to think of osteopathy? Well, it depends on the city you're in. So I know know, in Australia there's 2,000 osteopaths and about 800 of them are in Victoria. Um, and then Sydney has the next highest proportion, and then the remaining states are very few. So in Melbourne, we get people coming with all sorts of aches and pains, um, and the brand of osteopathy in Melbourne is quite strong. And I know the same in certain parts of Sydney, uh, but one of the struggles for osteopathy is to get more osteopaths into the other states around Australia um, and to get that greater recognition. But So what will happen in Melbourne will be different from what will happen in, say, Perth or Adelaide, where you might have maybe 75 osteopaths between the two cities, uh, in Melbourne, you'll have 75 within a very small distance. So for, for us in Melbourne, we get all sorts. But we get sports injuries, we get a lot of postural sprains, sort of ergonomics type injuries, 
Uh, and then you'll also pick up patients that are sort of at the end of their tether, where they've had an ache or a pain or an injury or an illness and they've seen specialists and doctors and chiropractors and physios and all sorts of things and, and they'll turn up in your desk. And sometimes you can help them. Sometimes you just like, I have no idea what I can do to help you here. Um, I might be able to massage you and make you feel a little bit more relaxed, but I don't think I'll be able to alleviate the cause of the problem. Now, I'm assuming that that uneven distribution of osteopaths is a result of an uneven distribution of university education. Yes. Yeah, there's two. That's right. In Victoria, you've had the longest history of osteopaths within tertiary institutions. You've got two, RMIT and VU, both pumping out at the moment. I think it's up to about 120 graduates per year, but don't don't hold me on absolute Mm -hmm. veracity there. Uh, and then there's another one in Southern Cross University in Northern New South Wales is is being operational probably about five years now I think. Um, but other than that, we've we've not really been in. There was UWS University of Western Sydney in Sydney had an osteopathic course for a number of years that got shut down, um, and they opened up a postgraduate medical course instead. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting time over the next 20 years to see how osteopathy and 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 manual therapy generally um, progresses and evolves because it's all up in the air at the moment as to where it will be. And, and there are some uh, countries around the world where osteopathy is a, a, a post-medical qualification, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So yeah, it varies per continent, really. You've got in the states where osteopathy began in the 1880s, it was a it was a it was developed by a medical doctor who was annoyed with using leeches and mercury to fix people in the <laughs> 1880s. So he started to obsess over anatomy and use anatomy and some of his stuff was phenomenal uh, and at the time he was pretty impressive and some of his stuff you know after after 130 years is a little bit out of date but in the states osteopaths have always been doctors so you've got uh, GPs you've got anaesthetists you've got surgeons and I think there's only about 10 to 15 percent of osteopaths in the states practice with hands-on care uh, they generally as a rule are a bit more holistic and do do tend to go towards family medicine more than a traditional MD in the States. Uh, mm-hmm. And then in, in the continental Europe, it's different again. So in continental Europe, from what I understand, it's uh, physiotherapists or doctors have to do postgrad studies to become osteopaths. Um, and in the UK, it's a four-year undergraduate qualification, whereas in Australia, it's five years for the undergrad and master's. Well, of course, like anything in the health profession, a mere 100 years just makes it a new um, tradition. So um, it may take a little while yet to get sorted out. <laughs> I would suggest so, but it's pretty exciting times in the realms of science and manual medicine and pain science, particularly at the moment. I think we're seeing great leaps forward, and it's interesting watching. You know, I'm particularly interested in neuroscience and pain science, and so the colleagues that I keep in touch with a lot. And it's fantastic being able to integrate these new concepts within the practice of what we already do. And I think that's going to be even more exciting as we learn more and more of what pain is and how pain occurs. Um, and start to get new theories on how some of these techniques that we use effectively are actually occurring, what they're doing and how they work. On that line, Bill, as you know, most of our audience are uh, clinicians of one sort or another. Mm. What would you like clinicians to know about osteopathy? What would you like to say to them? Uh, Yeah, Um, we treat more than you think. (laughs) We're not just bones. (laughs) I think that's the biggest problem with my profession, and I'll get slammed for this by some of my colleagues, but the name osteopathy does not reflect what we do very well. Bone pathology has very, very little to do do with what we have to do. Osteopaths treat musculoskeletal maladies. That's the way I think of it. So it could be anywhere from the tip of your toe to the top of your head um, and anything in between. Uh, So that would be nice to have that message further out there because it gets a bit grating when you get told you're a... You're a bone specialist when you're not really at all. See, that's the problem with all those uh, Latin and Greek roots to medical words. Osteo brings to mind instantly bone. Of course it does, and why wouldn't it? If we could travel back in times when the the founding osteopaths were sitting around trying to determine a name, you'd just have to ask them what the hell they were thinking, really. They knew they weren't just treating bones. They were all over stuff. They were hugely onto anatomy and arteries and muscles and all sorts, but... um, Osteopathy seems to be the one that's stuck with them the most. Yes, well, it's not going to change quickly. Bill, we're running out of time, so let me ask you my favourite uh, question to end an interview. Mm. What's the biggest misconception amongst your patients and colleagues and clients that drives you nuts and keeps you awake at night? I reckon I've just answered that one. Osteopathy is and what is Yeah, more I thought than... you might have. Yeah. Look, it is, and it is. It's one of those frustrating ones where, you know, it's better now. I've come, what, I'm 
12 years out from when I first started, or 11 years out from when I first started studying, obviously up at the end of that point, no one knew anything of what it was. And then five years ago when I graduated, six years ago when I graduated, people started to understand a little bit, oh, osteopaths, oh, you, you're your bones, aren't you? You do something with bones. But these days when I go out to dinner parties and different things, I'll be my osteopath, it now is getting better in the sense that they then go, I've got this sore wrist or I've got this sore back. Do you mind having a look at it? <laughs> which is very frustrating, but it's also a sign that we're getting greater recognition, which is nice. It is a good idea that you're being recognised more widely, and I do appreciate your time this morning in talking to us. Um, Bill Adamson of Errol Street Osteo, it's been a pleasure having you on Health Professional Radio. We must have a longer chat about some of your uh, your diverse views and, and go a little broadly one day, a little yeah. more broadly one day. Love to be involved, Wayne. I've, uh, I've enjoyed the chat and I'm always happy spruiking osteo where I can. You're listening to Health Professional Radio with Wayne Buckler. If you've just joined us, then you've just missed a very interesting chat with Bill Adamson, an osteopath of Errol Street Osteopathy. However, the good news is a transcript of this interview available on our webpage at www.hpr.fm. And there's a SoundCloud archive if you'd like to hear what we had to say, and it's also available on YouTube. This is Wayne Buckler for Health Professional Radio.